Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 85. This mold is one that I've been eyeing off because it has such a wide open hole so I have promised that it will be a great pot shape. I love random pots for all the random plants and cuttings I have. It is literally why I started pottery to, was to make my own wacky pots before the mystery molds. Oh how my pottery has evolved. I was always known for my posy pots and now I'm known for these wonderful mystery molds and I ain't mad about it. I love unboxing them and uncovering their magic with you all. This shape can also be a mug which which is also fabulous I'm happy with either I pour it up and it took a lot of clay to fill it up I tip it out and I always leave my molds to drain upside down until the clay doesn't drip anymore drips can go back into your cast it's not ideal on the finish of the piece aesthetically and it also can cause cracks due to them drying inconsistently with the rest of the piece and I discovered that the hard way at the start of my slip casting journey you can let them drip if you want and your clay might be better than mine but yeah that's the reason why I let them hang upside down I open this mold up and wow these are epic look at them they are lemons lemon pots lemon tumblers lemon cups whatever that you want to be they're lemons look at that texture I mean if you have a fear of holy textures this is not an ideal situation for you but if you adore texture and the play of shapes and you will love this week's piece like I do it looks like a jar of preserved lemons I love this is so different to all the other pieces too I feel we've had a lot of very simple shape pieces that serve a function and a lot of sweet animals and maybe it's just been a while since we've had a food feature regardless I am so excited here I am trimming the excess clay off the piece something I share with people who come to the studio is when you trim your pieces you have to do it with enough pressure that you're cutting away the clay but not too much that you start to warp the piece if you push your piece with too much intensity you can turn this beautiful circle shape into an oval and then the clay can sometimes retain that memory of the oval shape and warp back to that state in the kiln firings so take your time trimming and make sure you are supporting the piece so it doesn't warp from the pressure of course I just showed you the mold itself so you can look for it to put it into your collection it states it's a lemon tumbler which is part of a lemonware collection which makes me so excited to see what else would be a part of this lemonware collection but let's get on to the artwork this week I was like we can already see what the piece is going to look like finished. I feel like this style of lemon pottery had a major trend maybe in the late 90s. I swear I remember it at a friend's house growing up. It's basically presented with a yellow and green leaf detail. So I thought, how can I put my own spin on it while still playing homage to this beauty of the fruit and the nostalgia of these pieces? My answer to that was to do three different designs. The first, I created a soft yellow mellow color with a few of the lemons featuring sweet and sour faces which you can see here at first I was nervous to do these because I was worried that they would kind of stand out too much against the yellow like they, they kind of were a bit jarring I also wanted to highlight the texture so I decided to bisque these and then do a mustard yellow wash which will bring out the texture and also make the faces blend as part of the same lemon and then the idea of doing the faces on only a few lemons was to portray them all being smooshed in the one jar and not being able to see the other faces as they are smooshed behind other pieces in the jar the next design is my homage to the nostalgia of the lemon pottery. I'm doing a glaze to this one with yellow and the green on the leaves. And again, I didn't want to lose the texture of the lemon. So I added an orange and darker green under glaze wash. I know this looks like an orange, but just trust me, it's going to look so good because it's going to bring out the warmth of the yellow glaze from underneath and it's just going to be present in the crevice areas. Just trust me, okay? The final design in this week's video is a play on the idea of what color you think this should be because typically we would just see yellow and green I guess because it's a lemon right so I knew I was going to be using yellow which there's nothing wrong with that and nothing wrong with painting things the way they're meant to be but I wanted to play with the expected and have a little bit of fun doing a kind of pop art inspired piece it takes on a bit of an Andy Warhol inspiration as I decided to use very vibrant colors in contrast with each other and then use a different color for the highlights I don't I don't know too much about Andy Warhol to have a well gathered opinion on him but I do know he is both problematic controversial and somehow managed to influence the art world with his very bold and colorful works it was the only artist I could think of that reminded me of what I'm trying to achieve with this sort of mind bend color play concept of these lemons to achieve that very vibrant pop arty kind of style I chose a bright blue red green and yellow and then I washed over 
a different color after I bis fired them with a different color to contrast. So with the blue, I did a lighter blue and then I did red on top of the green. It was sort of playing with colors that I, like you wouldn't typically see a lemon. So that's the whole concept for this third and final piece. Uh, they all experience some form of antique washing just at various stages in various colors. I don't typically work with colors like these ones. They are very out of my comfort zone, but I just thought it would be so fun to play with this concept this week. Whilst I was painting this week, I discovered how fragile the texture and detail of these lemons made the structure of the vessel. I broke two of these which snapped in a seam of where the lemons joined so that was just something I had to be wary of working with this piece this week. I popped each one of these into the bis kiln which you'll see in a second and then I add the remaining underglaze washes, glazes and clear glazes to the designs but I wanted to take a moment to talk about something because I feel like if I didn't take the opportunity to say it this week I never will. It goes like this. When life gives you lemons <laughs> keep them because you got some free lemon pottery to paint or something or other the quote goes I just want you to know that sometimes life can be a little sour it can feel unbearably sour like a warhead that you can't spit out but in time with a few bits of sweetness a little bit of love you can turn those lemons into something nice like a lemon curd to spread over your toast a delicious recipe aka human like you needs a good balance balance of sweetness, a, a bit of love and some sourness to sort of make the flavor really great. I don't actually know where I'm going with this, but for the moments that feel really, really hard, I know, especially for me, I, it can feel so unbearably hard and like you're never going to get out. But with those hard times, there's also those lovely times and there's the wholesome times ahead that sort of add to your beautiful flavor that creates you as a human being. I hope that if you are having a hard time right now or a sour time, <laughs> so to speak, is that you know that you are just two ingredients away from being a delicious toast condiment. <laughs> This is not helpful. I, but when life is sour, there's only a sweetness away to make it feel a whole lot better. Okay, I shouldn't be giving advice about turning you into a tasty snack when you're sad. So I'm going to go back to my strength of creating these sour artworks and hope they'll brighten your day instead of comparing you to a condiment. But you get what I'm trying to say is that there's sweetness amongst the sourness. Here I am adding those glazes for the ones that I did the underglaze wash on first. And then I I went back and did these vibrant colors as you can see I'm adding sort of a different color on top and adding a wash I've never done the separate sections in different colors and then wiped it away so I was a bit nervous that by wiping one color away I was going to smudge sort of blue into as you can see here I could have smudged the blue into the red crevices and things like that but I wasn't too phased it was a great test for this piece in particular because I don't think it would have mattered if a bit of orange landed on a blue lemon because I was already playing with that color popness it was just a good piece that I could practice I guess like isolating colors and washes on for a future piece that might need a bit more precision so it was a really fun practice on this piece in particular and gave some really cool results the finishing touches for these pieces is giving them their shiny coat. I know some people like the matte, but I love shine and I love them feeling smooth and lush. I don't want to feel those textures necessarily feeling very hard. So that's why I add the glaze onto these. So I added a yellow glaze in the center of all of them so that it makes it consistent with all the pieces despite their outside design. And then I dipped the ones that hadn't had the glaze on the outside into the clear glaze to just give them that nice sort of finishing coat. I then pack them in the kiln, set that overnight, and uh, we'll come back in the morning to see the finished results, aka right now. And here they are. They popped straight away. How fantastic are those colors? Remember how I said to trust me with the orange? Look how gorgeous that yellow comes up now. Because of that orange, I wish I sort of did one with just the yellow glaze so you could see how much that orange just added that 
little bit of extra depth to the glaze as well as the green I, I think the green glaze did its own magic and was so lovely on its own it didn't really need the under glaze washing but oh the texture of those lemons is fantastic here are our little smush faces I love these these are so good. These turned out great. I was really nervous about these faces looking out of place, but they look like they're meant to be there. And I think just because of the placement of the faces and the way I positioned some of them, so it did look like they were kind of being smushed, it worked really well. It made it more intentional and less of a standout. These are the final pieces. These really pop. These are so different to the other pieces and very different to my usual work. I think these are fun. These are so interesting. I do find that the green lemon with the red inlay is a little bit I don't know it makes me feel a bit uncomfy but I feel like that's a good thing that's making me feel things <laughs> these are great as well definitely a great learning thing and also a great experiment what do you think of these gorgeous tumblers I actually think these would be so perfect as a tumbler for a candle like a refill candle maybe a lemon meringue scent oh that would be so delicious I love them let me know what you think in the comments and here is your sneak peek for the next week's reveal thank Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.